What does space sound like? It's easy to believe it might be heavy silence, an eerie kind of deafening silence you'd feel in a dark, empty, never-ending desert. But beyond the edge of our solar system, more than 14 billion miles or 25 billion kilometers away from us, the NASA Voyager 1 has detected a persistent hum in interstellar space. What does this mean? Voyager 1 NASA's Voyager 1 space probe was launched 40 years ago. And now, it's the most distant man-made object in space. Since its launch in 1977, Voyager 1 has provided humanity with observations of truly uncharted territory, helping scientists understand the nature of energy and radiation in space. Key information for planning future missions and protecting astronauts. Voyager 1 also carries a message from humanity to the cosmos that includes greetings in 55 languages. Pictures of people and places on Earth and music ranging from Beethoven to Chuck Berry. It overtook Voyager 2 in December 1977 and after completing its flyby missions of Saturn and Jupiter, it continued towards the edge of our solar system. In 1990, it pointed its cameras backward to give us about 60 breathtaking images of the Sun and the planets orbiting it, the first portrait of the solar system. Now, the Voyager 1 has a new mission, to explore what lies outside our little neighborhood. And throughout its journey, the probe has continued to send us valuable information. It now lies in an exciting region of space outside the heliosphere which is the protective bubble that encases the solar system. And a few months ago, the probe detected a hum. This isn't the first time the probe has sent us cosmic hums. In 2007, researchers unexpectedly stumbled across a bizarre sound clip stored in their files. The sounds were so-called FRBs, or fast radio bursts. They were so quick that each burst lasted no longer than a millisecond. From there, the search for other possible FRBs began, but what the Voyager 1 has picked up is significantly different. The sound, it seems, remained steady at 3 kHz for almost three years in a row, and it's the most stable and long-lasting hum we've ever detected. What was causing it? Scientists still aren't sure. The immense spaces of nothingness between star systems in a galaxy aren't actually empty. There's a stew of matter and radiation present in low densities, mostly gas, and it's called the interstellar medium. About 15% of the visible matter in our Milky Way galaxy is composed of this interstellar gas, dust, and energetic particles like cosmic rays. The hum was measured through ripples of plasma in the interstellar medium, the hodgepodge of gas, radiation, and particles that make up the space between stars. Before, Scientists could only take fleeting measurements of the interstellar medium after periodic but isolated eruptions from the Sun, which would unleash shockwaves that coursed through the solar system and beyond. Now, new findings suggest that by tracking these persistent vibrations in the interstellar medium, we might be able to understand certain properties of this environment, like the density. This in turn will help astronauts better understand the mysterious environment beyond the solar system. Even so, sound shouldn't be able to travel in a vacuum. So how were we able to catch the signal? Sounds in space It has long been said that there is no sound in space. And that's true only to a point. Sound travels when molecules vibrate against or bump into each other the same way ripples spread out when you drop a pebble in a pond. As the ripples get farther away, the sound loses its potency. As a sound wave passes, it causes oscillations in the air pressure. The time between these oscillations represents the frequency of the sound, and the distance between the oscillating peaks is the wavelength. Now, if the distance between the air particles is greater than this wavelength, the sound can't bridge the gap and the ripples stop. So, sounds need to have a wide wavelength, which would register as low pitch to us. Once the sound goes below 20 Hz, it becomes infrasound. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. 
A black hole, for example, emanates the lowest note we have ever registered, about a million billion times deeper than the sounds we can hear. You'd be able to hear one oscillation every 10 million years, where there are so few particles that such signals die away. Even major events like solar flares and cosmic disasters go silent before they are ever heard. But there's another type of compression and rarefaction that doesn't require anything other than the fabric of space itself to travel through. Gravitational waves Gravitational waves need to exist for our theory of gravity to be consistent, according to the theory of general relativity. When any two masses orbiting one another remain in that pattern forever, Einstein's theory predicted that over time, the gravitational orbits would decay. The same will happen to our planet. Of course, we wouldn't live to experience it. But in the far future, the Earth will eventually spin into the Sun. But in more extreme cases, like two neutron stars orbiting each other, we can actually see the orbits decay over time. Einstein's theory predicted that in order to conserve energy, energy must be carried away in the form of gravitational waves. These waves aren't strong by any measure. Their effects on the objects in spacetime are maddeningly tiny. But if you know how to listen, just like the components of a radio know how to listen for those long-frequency light waves, then you can catch these signals and hear them like you would any other sound. They are like any other wave, with an amplitude and a frequency. General relativity makes very clear predictions for what these waves should sound like with the largest wave-generating signals being the easiest ones to detect. Voyager 1 was designed with two hypersensitive antennas, designed to detect plasma variations in space and record them. Even when the probe manages to pick up these signals, it's far from what our ears can register. But scientists have found a way to convert these signals into sounds we can hear. This is the sound of a vast, empty space, 14 billion miles or 25 billion kilometers away from us. It was unfathomable a few decades ago. Voyager 1 Journey Voyager 1 has given us similar if not more incredible discoveries in its time, from spotting two new moons, Thebe and Metis, to helping us understand the turbulent conditions of Neptune's climate, to bringing us valuable data from beyond our solar system. Sadly, its power is due to run out this decade, as it runs up to 50 years of service. It was never meant to make it this far and still stay connected to us. But Voyager 1 had made it far past anyone's expectations. The replacements of the craft are already in place, and they have been specifically designed to reach further than ever. Aptly named the Interstellar Probe, it is intended to go 10 times as far as the Voyager 1. It will launch sometime in the early 2030s and take about 15 years to reach the heliosphere boundary, a milestone that took Voyager 35 years. The lifespan of the interstellar probe is rated at 50 years, which would give it 35 years and likely much longer to explore a totally new region of space. Voyager 1 was only ever made to perform Jupiter and Saturn flybys. How much further could the new craft go? The more answers we get from the universe, the more questions we have. And that isn't likely to change anytime soon.